G'day GDL people, Bruce here, Barking Dog Bim, and welcome to another edition of Scripting Adventure. It's also going to be a bit of an Archicad adventure too. Go us! Now, when you create your own objects, of course, you're thinking about how to generate the 3D geometry. Generally, that's why you create an object. You've got this form, this assembly that you need to achieve and show in your model. You also need to think about the 2D representation. What line work do you need to show and what do you need to hide? What additional line work might you need? For example, minimal clearance zones or directional arrows. And what do you show in plan versus RCP? You also need to consider the intuitiveness of use. How easy is this part going to be for a user unfamiliar with it? All of these things you need to think about. Now, another aspect that you need to consider that isn't necessarily as obvious is how are you going to schedule this object? How are you going to quantify it? What information in what form is going to be useful in a schedule? And how do you achieve that? Well, I'll tell you. We've got this object I created in episodes 18, 19 and 22 called BDB Holes. And I figured this is as good an object as any to show you what you can achieve in a schedule. You can change various aspects about it. So you can adjust its size, its height, the number of holes it has, the offset margin or the edge margin and the shape of the hole. So I'll just throw some of these in the model and adjust the parameters to make it a good cross section of objects that we can schedule. Here's a nice selection on the ground floor. I haven't made them all unique. I'd like some duplicates, just like you would have in a real project. And on level one, we've got another set of objects as well here they are in 3d good cross section of various objects just create a new schedule new schedule and i'll call it bdb33 holes schedule we want to filter by object we want to filter by the library part name that's the library part name. And to start with, we will schedule the home story name. The length, width, and height. We'll schedule the quantity and we will schedule a 3D view. We don't want to sort by any of these. We might just sort by the length. Home story sorting first and then length. Okay, let's have a look at that. Good, there's our schedule. And of course you can see that these don't fit. To get those to fit, I click on this button up here and I can resize the columns and rows one by one, or I can just say resize to fit content. Let's change some formatting. We'll change the text style. And we can update these names to suit what we want. Let's resize these again. We'll justify the lengths by the decimals and numbers to the right. So if it's an integer, you can't justify by the decimal. That's okay, you can still justify to the right. We'll add a total row by clicking on settings and we will sum the quantity. There we go. That's uh, 40 elements in total. They're all listed individually at the moment. So merge similar items. So we've got five of these, three of these. We'll show a headline. So instead of each instance listing the story, We'll click on headline and it'll separate them out by story. 
Number one. Oh, look, now's not a good time. And we'll add some formatting. Let's add some stripes. Let's mix this up a bit. Now, if you want to undo formatting, you click on the undo here, not the undo up here. Make our grand total. Our grand total row have no column divisions. Bold. Now, if we also want to total the quantity for each story, we click on the flag here, and that'll give us a total or a subtotal. So that gives us a reasonably nice formatted schedule. We'll save a view of it. We'll call this, oh, put it under our FF&E schedule. We'll give it a layer combination, scale. So this is where you can give your images a scale. This is where you do it. Pen set, model view options. So if I wanted to change that scale now, I can do it in my view. So one is to 20. There we go. We'll keep it at one is to 50. So see it didn't refresh here. If you need to refresh it, you can close the schedule, reopen it again, or you can go to view, refresh and rebuild. Then to place it on your layout, be aware that all schedules will come in at scale one to one. So you need to make sure that you don't include them in auto texting and indexes. Otherwise they'll mess up your auto scale down here in your title block. We'll just turn off the scale. You can also restructure your schedule by using this button on your pet palette, restructure. And that will force your schedule into new columns. I can change values from a schedule. If I want to resize columns or rows, I can use this button up here, or I can click and drag on the divider or I can double click on it to automatically fit it to the content. Let's put on an area as well. I want to show you something. So these parameters here, when I click on add fields, the parameters that I add are parameters that ArchiCAD recognizes for pretty much any element. So here's my area. We'll justify it to the decimal. We'll just set all these to the same as well. Now you will have noticed that these length, width and height fields are showing an inordinate number of decimal places. That is controlled with your dimension schemes. So I'll go back to our floor plan here, look at my dimension schemes, and I've got three set up. One that just has zero decimals for length, a QA set that shows as many decimal places as possible, and one for my schedule, which just has one decimal place. So if I change that in my view, view settings, dimensioning, dimensioning's QA, if I go to the dimensions, which has no decimal places, right, no decimal places. That's for the length, width, and height. Area remains unchanged. Let's have a look again, change it to my schedule, which has one decimal place. Right, shows one decimal place. Now, I don't know why, but that will only impact your length cells, your length format. To change your area format, you've got to go to Options, Project Preferences, Calculation, Units. And then under here, you change your area decimals. So if I was to change my area decimals to zero now, changes it to that.
Now, that will change it for your entire project. It won't change it schedule to schedule. Um, I think it would actually be useful to have this as part of your dimensions settings as well. So therefore, you could change it schedule to schedule. Anyway, that's how you do it. Project preferences, calculation units, and change it under here. That will actually truncate, round and truncate the number. So it won't export four decimal places. It will only export two, even though the measurement might be more granular than that. So I can change the values from the schedule. I can select these items on the floor plan by choosing the row and clicking on this button here, select on floor plan, it will take me to it. Only if the layer is visible or I can select it in 3D. There we go. Be careful with the 3D one on large projects. It can take a bit of time to generate that 3D. Right, so that's pretty good. But what if I want to go in deeper into what I want to schedule? What if I want to schedule the number of holes? X and Y number of holes, the type of holes. Archicad doesn't have parameters, native parameters for that. I need to go into the object itself and schedule those parameters. Well, there's a way that you can schedule any parameter in any object. Instead of clicking on Add Fields, you click on the down arrow here and go Library Part Parameters. Click on that. And that will bring up a list of all of your loaded libraries and add ons. So including your embedded library here, and you're able to drill down into that, into any object, and then list any of those parameters in your schedule. So let's go hole type, holes X, holes Y. Resort those to where I want them to be. And turn off sorting. Update my headings. Change my formatting or my alignment and my column width. So it's good, circular, rectangular. Change this. Let's sort these instead of by length by hole type. Okay. Good. So that is how you drill into an object to schedule a parameter that's already there. So when I come back to my layout, it reformats and updates. So if I'm to copy some more, oh, that's really tiny. Change that margin to something a little bit better. It updates and it's keeping my restructured. I can also place a border around this by turning on my frame, add printable border, set your offset to what you want, your pen weight to what you want, and I will set a border around the entire thing. I can also split this among layouts. So you've got the option on your info bar, but also under your settings, if I choose under frame, split drawing among multiple layouts, it will actually create new layouts and split that schedule across those layouts. So there we go, it has created another layout. So if I click on this next layout here, there's the rest of my schedule. So there are limitations to how it can do that properly. You may not be happy with the result, but that's pretty good with long lists of schedules in the right sized layout. It'll do that properly. Now, if I wanna go even further, so for example, this whole types i don't want these listed as separate fields i want to be three by four i want to show something like that an area area will be the entire surface area of the object it won't have the holes subtracted from it so i want to be able to do that as well so let's have a look at creating some parameters specifically for scheduling so let's select an object any object that's placed we can open it by going file Libraries and Objects, Open Object. We can use the shortcut key, or I can use this 
button on my Edit GDL Library Parts toolbar. I'll restore down using this button up here, and I'll open a parameter script window. First of all, I'll create a title. Create some parameters that I'm going to list in my schedule. Rename these. Length and width will be length parameters. Number of holes. I want this to be a concatenated number of holes, so four by three. So that'll be a text. Total number of holes will be an integer. Hole area will be a real number, and scheduled area will be a real number. So these are the parameters I want to schedule. Let's fill them up now. So my parameter script. Let's create another section, we'll call it. So I'll start by putting in my parameters statement, command. Parameters will actually update my parameters with a value that I tell it to. If I just change the parameters within this, this script itself, so if I say, say, schedule whole length equals whole length, that will change the value within the script itself, but it won't push that change back up to my parameter list. So that has to be, after that, actually part of that command to be effective. So when I click in here, this should change. Right, 533. Where is that value coming from? It's coming from my master script. So I set my whole length and my whole width and my whole min in the master script, so therefore they're available to all the scripts. So whole length equals whole length. I can continue this command with a comma at the end of the line. Whole width equals whole width. All right, that's populated there. Number of holes. How am I going to work this out? So what I want it to look like is if I've got number of holes three and four, I want it to be three x four. So I'll say schedule number of holes, which is this parameter here, equals, we want it to be the number of holes in the X with an X separating them, and then number of holes in the Y, that and that. Now that won't work because I'm mixing numbers and strings. So I need to change this number to a string. I do that with the string command, and that will be one digit, zero decimals. And I want to add to that my X, and then I want to add to that the string of my number of holes Y. One digit, zero decimals, because it's an integer. So I've set this value here. Now I can take that, add it to my parameters command. Number of holes equals number of holes. So I set the value. Now I set the parameter. Three times four. That's what I want. Good. Total holes. How many is that? Well, that's pretty easy. That'll just be my number of holes X multiplied by my number of holes Y. And then that can be pushed back up to my parameter list. Number of holes, total number of holes, 12. Good. Now for the fun one, working out this area. So what I need to do is I need to take the entire area, which will be A times B. Then I need to subtract from it the area of a single hole multiplied by the total number of holes. So I'll put in a temporary variable here. And there's no difference in GDL between a constant. So I declare my constants in capitals. I declare my variables in camel case. I declare my parameters using snake case. I declare my temporary variables, so very localized variables for a specific task with a leading underscore. GDL doesn't care. That's purely for the humans reading it so that they understand what's going on. That's part of the GDL style guide. So we've got three different hole types. We've got a rectangular, circular, and diamond shaped. The hole area will be different depending on what it is. If it's rectangular, it'll just be the whole length times the whole width. That gets you your area. For a circle, what's a circle? You remember your high school geometry? It's pi r squared to work out the circle, area of a circle. And for a diamond, it will be 
half of a rectangle. So to demonstrate that, I've got to fill one metre by one metre, turn on my area. Got a diamond shape. Half metre. So my area will be different depending on what type of hole it is. So I put in my if statements, if hole type equals hole type rectangular, then I want to declare a hole area equals, what will it be? It'll be my hole length multiplied by my hole width. Good. If hole type equals hole type, and these are my constants declared here, set up in my selection list. Have a look at the previous videos, 18, 19, and 22, where we went through all this. If the whole type is whole type circular, then whole area will equal pi multiplied by, so it's pi r squared. Radius will be, now I've got a whole minimum set up here to determine where I get my radius from. So it'll be, that is my radius. No, that's my, so that is my diameter. Because it's my diameter, I need to divide it by 2 to get my radius. And to raise something to an exponential power, we use the up arrow, which is shift 6. It's above the 6 on your keyboard. And 2. That's squared. So that will give me the area of my circle. And the last one's a diamond. Hole type equals diamond. Then it'll be the same as a rectangle divided by 2. So there's my three different types of areas for my holes. And then to get my net area, once again, I'm just creating this variable. It will be the gross area. Take away my hole area multiplied by my total holes, which will be this one here. There's your holes. Okay. That's my calculations. Now to fill out my parameters, my hole area here will equal whole area and my scheduled area will equal my area net. There we go. Good. So I'll save that and in my schedule I can add these parameters. So click on the down arrow, library part parameters. I can also filter this view. Instead of folder view I can say used objects only and that will reduce that list to be a bit more manageable. This one here, we've got my new parameters. Here we go, my scheduling parameters here. Add all those, resort how I want. I no longer need these ones. Don't need that one. Let's have a look. Update my formatting. Okay, so that's looking pretty good now. That's got all the information we need. Type of hole, the length, the width, the height. Now, when I clicked on merge items, if I unclick this, it will list each one individually. Let's merge those again. When I click on the header here, you've got this button here that goes merge options. So you can have a bit of a play around with those settings to see how you can get this list to merge to more closely reflect what it is you want to output. The other thing you can do is you can annotate in 3D or 2D views. Click on that annotate button there, and then I can put in some text. In 2D views as well, you can put in some dimensions, lines, other drafting elements that you might want to put in, and then you OK it, and there it is. So you can complement your output in that way by putting in some annotation. But a word of warning, if you unmerge the items, your annotation will disappear. So custom annotation will be lost. Gone. Even if I remerge, it's gone. So just be aware of that. Coming back to my schedule on my layout, it updates, kept my structure looking good. So I've just used a 
pretty simple generic object here, but I'm sure you can think in your own mind how you can roll this out or utilize this in the projects you're working on yourself. Some examples of where I have used this in live projects had this addition to an existing retail where we had this screen down either side and it had a varying degree of open angle depending on where it was in the structure and different colors as well depending on other criteria. So I created an object that would open to 0, 45 and 90 degrees and then I could schedule that in the panel list. You give a panel a number, list the fabric color, the angle, and whether both sides of the panel are to be lined with fabric or not. So this can then be exported as an Excel spreadsheet, and whoever's contracted to do the work can interrogate and filter that list to better help them quantify and actually do the work. On this project, which I've shown before, these wall grills which uses a very similar object to the holes object I've just shown you, but uses it as a window type. I was able to schedule that in a grill schedule here using that exact method. So I created my own parameters so that I could list this exactly how I wanted, complemented it with some descriptive diagrams and details here. And on this particular project, which I've also shown briefly before, there's a bunch of decorative pipes in the wall. I had all different profiles to them. This has got a funky profile. This is just a round profile. You can kind of see that funky profile there. These also have a funky profile, but it's a different type of funky profile. These have got a circular profile. And there's a whole bunch of them around here. There's straight segments, there's elbowed segments, there's segments that turn 90 degrees up, there's segments that turn a certain amount of degrees on the horizontal. And what I was able to do by creating an object using the tube command, which I've also outlined just in previous recent videos, I was able to create these two sheets first sheet is a describing sheet with the details, how to set them out, their profiles, how to make up those profiles, along with the key plan or the key drawings identifying the segments, how to interpret those codes, and then a schedule straight off the model of all the different parts that needed to be fabricated. And I was able to give this to the set deck guy and also the carpenters because two different departments did it. And they were able to go away and produce exactly what they needed based on this information taken straight out of the model. So this is the sort of complexity and comprehensiveness you can build into your parts and extract straight from your model. This is making the machine work for you. This is making the dog bark for you. Well that wraps this one up. Now you know how to schedule any parameter of any object in your loaded libraries. You also have a bit of an idea about how to concatenate and prepare data so the information you want can display how you want in your schedules. If you found this tutorial useful then give it a like. If you think I'm worth your repeated attention and you want to learn more about ARCHICAD and GDL then subscribe to the channel. Until next time, go script something. I'll see you later.